public service announcements on behalf of every African mother. We are tired. We have beautiful daughters, 27, 28. Some of them are even going to 33, 34. Where are all the men? Where are all the men? You see these girls on Instagram, they're putting pictures of themselves with bay in the pool, fake bay. They are asking, they say, we want these men. Where are you? Where are the men? If you're a man out there, they're beautiful women. Daddies, please send your sons out. The girls are looking for the men. It is time. Our prayer points, our prayer books are too full. It's time for the men to come out. <laughs> oh, man. This is not just going on in the Western world. This is not just happening in America and the Black American society or community where we're like, yo, these women have strayed so far. The man is starting to seek solace outside of the country <laughs> this is not just happening in america well there's several reasons why these women are being left out just to be by themselves there's several reasons it's, a, it's very complicated africa is a very complicated place <laughs> there's several reasons i'll break them down you didn't have to agree with me but i've lived there before i was I'm, country of origin my birth country is nigeria so I'm going to speak from the Nigerian perspective because that's what I know. I don't know about the other countries, but in Nigeria, for example, these women have started charging for relationships. They're pricing themselves out of the market. Because for a Nigerian girl right now, it's not about, oh, you love me, about your potential, about the future. No, it's about what can you do for me right now? I want to use an iPhone 14 Pro Max. I want to buy an expensive weave. I, I want to buy the latest designer outfit. Can you do that for me now? It's not about the, the love and all the sweet talking. What can you do for me right now? So you see, a lot of these men, the younger guys now, are realizing, oh man, I can be using this money to prepare for my future, to set myself up for a better life. But I'm funding this girl's lifestyle while my family is still in poverty. You need to understand the driving factor of most of these relationships in, South Af in Nigeria, for example, in Africa in general, is driven off of poverty. So everybody is in survival mode. So even in some families now, if they're lucky enough to have a beautiful daughter, like a beautiful drop-dead gorgeous girl, the parents even kind of want to pimp her out. Like to the highest beta or something. Oh, you shouldn't be dating someone broke. You're too beautiful for this guy. You're too nice for this guy. And pay pressure as well. Oh, you can't be you dating a guy. He's not buying you this. Look what my boyfriend bought me. And that makes the girl go pressure her boyfriend to do the same. And this guy's now like, they get, they get to a certain point. They're like, you know what? Forget about it, man. I'll just go and hustle and try and feed my family. Because those guys, their families are stressing them as well to provide. You know? Because the... Life expectancy in Africa is pretty low because, of, like I said, poverty. People are working themselves to death. So you have an older generation that are dying off like flies. Elders just dying off. Not really impacting relationship knowledge into their boys and their girls on how to pick partners. How to pick a spouse. How to pick a wife or a husband. Not a girlfriend. A lot of people think in Africa, you still have all this arranged marriage where the man from this family and the man from the other family come together and they merge their kids and that's it. No, maybe in some rural parts of like Nigeria, for example, because I'm speaking from that perspective, because that's what I know. I'm not going to speak about what I don't know. So a lot of those arranged stuff might happen in some rural areas. But right now, Nigeria is so modernized, right? They copy their lifestyle, the templates is from... The black American is <laughs> from the black American community. That's what they look at. That's what they emulate. The black Chinas, the Kiki Palmers, and so on. That's what they emulate. The real housewives of Atlanta. That's what this girl's looking up to. Can you find good girls? Of course, I'm not speaking in absolutes. There are very good girls there. Like I say, you have to go to the rural areas. They're good girls. You can find some good girls, but you have to look. You really have to look. And like I said, a lot of these guys don't know how to pick. They're picking women out of aesthetics. They're looking at ass and tits. Because 
they don't have anyone anymore to teach them how to pick. And these girls don't know how to pick. They're picking out of six pack and six foot tall. How fast is your count? How handsome is he? Does he have nice hair or pink lips? None of that, all that nonsense. That don't matter in the grand scheme of things because they don't know how to pick. Because who's going to teach them? The elders are all dying out. So it's a very, very, very complicated situation. Like, let's... <laughs> oh, man. Another thing is, a lot of these girls now, like I say, are demanding so much from their guys. They look at... They, they, once, once you tell a Nigerian girl, for example, once she knows, again, I'm not speaking in absolutes, but most of them, once you let them know you like them, you dig them, and they've already sussed you out and look at you from head to toe and look at your potential and stuff like, all right, he's abroad or he has a good job or whatever. He can provide me with a certain kind of lifestyle and all that. That's, I know, it's survival. That's all well and good. But it's when they start demanding, as in start, we call it billing. They start billing you, as in taxing you. Like, immediately they know you like them. Next thing, oh, my mom is sick. My dad just fell off a ladder at work. He's got, he's got brain hemorrhage. My my sister's kids need school fees because she's a single mother and this and this and that. They kind of want to put all that in your head. Can make it your responsibility. And you're like, man, we've only been dating like a mom for two. <laughs> man, just wa watch this other video. We'll come back and talk. You're a South African girl and you like a guy. Let's say you like a Nigerian guy. We will not hide our feelings. You don't even have to start spending money uh, yeah, before true. I can do anything okay. with you. If I like you, I like you. It's genuine. You know. With Nigerian girls, what I've noticed, first I need to suck everything out of you. Ah. That's what I've noticed about Nigerian Damn. girls. They love okay. money too much. You know, South African girls, we, we can love you. And we can even if you don't if even if you don't have money, we'll be like, uh, yeah. you know, as long as you're trying. With Nigerian girls, it's all about the money. If you don't have the money, I can't even speak to you. Why am I speaking to you? What are you doing? What am I gaining from you if you don't have the money to maintain my lifestyle? She's speaking some truths there. She's speaking some truth. Like I had a friend here that lives in the Western world that met a girl online, a Nigerian girl. Drop dead gorgeous, beautiful girl. And all of a sudden, the dude was asking me, like, is this, is it normal for Nigerian girls to always, like, there's always some, so, some sort of calamity in the family that requires money. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was like, bro, you're a mark. <laughs> you're a mark, man. She knows you're abroad and stuff like that. Probably earning okay money and stuff. Because okay money over here is a lot back there. And she knows you like her and, you know, you do whatever for her. So... I'm like, dude, she probably has a boyfriend over there. I would be surprised if her and the boyfriend, if the boyfriend is like even encouraging her, like, look, let's keep leading this guy on and stuff. He's like, yeah, but he went to Nigeria and stuff. They met and all that stuff. Everything was fine and all that. Then he came back here and, you know, still sending her money and stuff like that. This little money here and there, little money here and there. What he sees as, as little money here and there. It was like basically putting her on salary every month. I was like, do you realize you just put this girl on salary every month? And this is the job you're doing. You're not even you're not rich, bro. You're putting you put you put her on a salary every month, brother? He's like, what well, it's not really like that. I'm like, what do you mean it's not really like that? You're sending her money monthly. So me and him we did a calculation of all the money he sent her over the uh eight or nine months they've been together. And like, bro, no, 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 no. Mm -mm 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 -mm. She sees you as an ATM machine, bro. Nah. But he wouldn't listen. But he told me a couple of weeks ago that, you know, they're not together anymore. That's old news. I was like, man, you just dodged a bullet, bro. So, there are lots of good girls back there, but the bad ones are tarnishing the image of the good ones. So, you know, I'm not saying they're no good ones. They are good ones. If you're willing to really find them. It's just like needles and haystacks, man. You gotta be able to, you gotta be willing to find it. <laughs> man, I'm just being silly, man. Be careful out there, man. The more of my Western brothers, the black American brothers, and like, oh, America, somehow, these ladies have lost their minds and trying to go elsewhere to go find a wife. They want to go to Africa and go and find a wife. Just remember, when extreme poverty is involved, you got to be able to, you got to be willing to pay for someone's lifestyle. Are you willing to do that? You can sit the girl down and talk to her and let her know, look, your family is not my responsibility. You know, I can't fund your entire lifestyle. We got to work as a team. You have to know what you're getting yourself into.
So all these women that are, that are single right now in their 30s and stuff like that, they rejected the guys back in their 20s, the same guys that liked them back in their 20s. Now they want those same guys. And the guy's like, well, I don't want you no more because now things are good for me now. I want, I want, the, I want the younger girls. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy out there. So a lot of the guys that are wealthy, that are rich right now, they're well-to-do financially with a wife. Probably most of the times met those women when they were kids, grew up together. They've known them for a very, very long time. They've known their character. They're pretty much like family. They grew up together. Because if you've made it and you're trying to get a woman after you've made it, bro, bro, it'll be very, very hard. Because you wouldn't know if this woman are actually there for you or there for your pocket. Gotta be able to, Gotta know how to pick, man. I don't know how we're going to learn it, but you can't pick girls off of ass and tits, man.